the blue fuck. So I was going to come on here, right, and do a mini rant about how this episode was delayed coming out. Like, it was after 2 o'clock when I realized it wasn't coming out, so I went out and handled some stuff just to find out it did come out. So I had to come back to the house, which is why you're kind of getting this episode review late. But, damn. It's your main man, Master Zell, here with the Master Knights of the Roundtable, and company wants to scratch the spin move. And Jujutsu Kaisen had... Let me put out one of the best fights ever. But I'll be the first to admit this fight wasn't as flashy as like a, the fight record how we had with Mahito. Animation wasn't exactly as detailed as a Nanabi whooping dude's ass last week. Not only was the animation slick as hell right here on some Akadama Drive type shit, this was a lot, this was a lot more saucy than we normally get, y'all. Sometimes giving you more sauce than me isn't a bad thing. But like Mechaharu vs. Mahito, this is one of the more so back and forth fights that I enjoy. While a flashy one sided beatdown is great for shock value, it doesn't guarantee to go down to history books. Vegeta. But this fight occupied the entire episode besides Sam and Hobie right from the beginning. To the point where Koso, 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 Koso. I'm saying his name wrong this entire review. I am. He showed up his blood configuration, and basically he was showcasing that power in the beginning. To the point where Isidori had to get help again from Makaharu, to used to pretend to him talking to him, to get to the restroom, turn the tables, and he's making a level playing field, presumably, so they just go back and forth punching the hell at each other, just fighting man to man. To the point where power is getting involved again, that power is causing curse energy and curse sorcery. Get involved again, just to then, right after that, get back into it with more. Mm. It's just these kind of fights that I like that's able to elevate themselves further, but each character able to elevate themselves in their own ways, just get, reach into that eventual climax to a point where, honestly, you're at the edge of your seat, not knowing who's about to win this thing. While we have indeed passed the halfway point, this isn't the second time Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 has brought this kind of energy with amazing animation to back it up. If any Jujutsu Kaisen haters is there to be found, at this point, it's on site. Y'all might have to renew your anime cards or like take a test to get back in the community or something, man. Cause like, y'all hating on this? Psh. But let's get into it for real. Honestly, thanks to the narration behind everything, trying to explain the blood configuration shit, I understand this is not the only show that does this, but every time something like this happens, it just reminds me of Hunter Hunter. Even though the way he was doing his blood things here is really just some dead man on a Wonderland type ish. Except he wasn't really shooting guns, he was more like a laser. This guy was able to shoot his gun, whip it around, punch with it, all kinds of stuff. Harden it into weapons. Bro, this guy made you ask yourself what show you in for real. <laughs> and we know Isidori ain't no slouch, but eventually, man, like, the upper hand was obvious. To the point, like I said, Mechaharu had to chime in. And he was still dodging attacks while this was going on. And Mechaharu was on his normal thing, talking about he, he doesn't have much time, so he got to speak right here and there. And he'll give you an explanation later, but he'll give you an explanation why you're already doing what he's saying. In his defense, when most of these situations do happen, he's not exactly wrong with, with the situation at hand. It's just that that has to be annoying at some point. Especially since three or two times, two hours, three times it happened now, he was talking to these annoy. Hold on, I'm getting a call. Hey, Mikaho, how you doing? Shut the fuck up and listen. Like, bruh. Now, hauling ass to the restroom was a smart idea because that would be the best place for water. Even if he could just let the building on fire and just have the sprinklers do it. Presumably the ladies' restroom. I couldn't tell which one it was, honestly. So Mikoso got into it there and his blood configuration wasn't working no more because of the properties of his blood was man like I'm not gonna get I'm not, I'm not sure I'm gonna get into what it was saying over and over again. But basically it got to the point where just being around water just makes it not work. Combust on contact. I found the right words in this review. It's our third video of the day if you ain't up. And one of the moments where like I was talking about earlier with this being a very much back and forth fight, this is more which Jujutsu Kaisen fights kinda shine, cause let's keep it a hundred. In most cases, in most shows, it would have been over by now. To the point where his big special technique did not work, and he was also, also it was pointed out for him that his combat skills are not are kind of limited, and he doesn't have much combat experience. This would be the moment where he can't use his blood configuration or his curse energy the way he normally uses it, and either though he just goes in there and just beat his ass. Because this issue against Kaisen, it's simply not that easy. And the fight was on, and the cinematography of this fight was all over the place. Like, they just... So many different angles, so many different, bruh. You guy was jumping around, hopping over the place, hanging on bars and stuff, moving. Damn, man. This is one of the shows you cannot multitask. <laughs> yeah, if you go to the screen, you're going to miss every single. I believe the point I made earlier is indeed a valid point because at the same time, thinking that you're always wanting to fight is the Achilles heel here. Overconfidence. That because if you face this guy complete melee, one-on-one -on -one hands, doesn't mean you couldn't beat him. It's just the fact that you thought you was there. 
Because you stopped his technique that was beating you earlier doesn't mean he didn't have anything else up his sleeve. The blood he was hitting you with was already shot out, and then he was hitting you while the blood was out. All he had to do was focus his current energy on the inside, get his weapons and attacks ready, and then hit, hit it the second he was ready to use it. Blood don't combust that fast, motherfucker. And it, it leads me to the small, it's, a, it's just a small critique I have. And it's going to sound kind of hypocritical because of what I said about the back and forth fight. But when the moment happens, and he shot into Itadori and hit his liver, and Itadori even missing himself that he hit something, something vital, something that he needs. That Mr. Corso crushed Makaharu here. So yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's it for that man, huh? But upon this happening, not only does Itadori go right back into the fight, it's almost as if it didn't happen. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad that wasn't the end of it, but it's not like it hindered him or anything. It's just like, maybe it put like a time limit or a time counter on him in the, in the background, I guess. But, yeah, it kind of just went on about it, the fight, just like, whatever. I mean, sure, you don't have to tell us that the liver is important <laughs> and that getting shot in the liver is bad. However, if you're going to make a big deal out of something, make it a big deal. But anyways, they get back into the fight and get to the point where... It, though he pretty much has to fight Juan, he's going for his big grand punch. Here's the thing about that big grand punch. He's yet to actually do it. The clever guy, not necessary. The guy that was just the inverse guy, he couldn't. Stopped the big punch right beforehand, they tapped him just to beat him. Here he was straight up blocked. Quite frankly, even with the water going and everything, he just hit himself a blood a piece of blood armor underneath his clothes. This is the point where you have to say, you underestimated this man. One thing for Kozo to have his weapon in place and mess up because of the water. It's another thing for him to find another way to use it and just use it real quickly before the water messes him up. But for him to hide the blood, hide that underneath his clothes so the blood doesn't get wet so he can use that as armor, that's not something you just start off at the back of your mind. Not to mention since Itadori did take out his brothers, he knew well of Itadori already and prepared himself for this. It's like he, he was just simply ready. Using this opportunity to take out Itadori, thus winning the fight. I said a lot about Kugisaki last week. I said a lot, maybe justified, maybe I said a lot. I did, I did. But each of losing here is kind of like, hmm. That's, that's two out of y'all at, the, two out of y'all at this point. The reason why I was downplaying Kukasaki a little bit last week because she didn't prove herself to be on the same level as the other two. However, maybe she is. Buchigoro, don't don't get bummed out here, though. That dude's dad is out of and lastly, of course, when Itadori is on the verge of death or about to die at that moment, this is where certain somebody comes in. Now, second level, when it came to him, you know, he was talking about how the kid you lose and such riffraff. They didn't even show him for real. He was kind of just sitting in the shed with red and black lightning. Lightning, I mean, not lightning. Red and black lightning. Kind of fire. But the point where Kozo was having migraines and stuff, holding his head, roused you like he was drunk and high at the same time, crossfaded that shit. Uh, having memories that didn't exactly happen, as in either Doi being his brother in some old school 80s type. I, I, I just don't know. I, I was there like, what the fuck am I watching? It was one of those moments I was just like this. I couldn't tell you. I could say that had something to do with second I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. Speaking of, those two girls going to either Doi afterwards, just checking on him, making sure he's still alive, which they confirmed that he is. Now I'm going to let that next week tell that story as well. The fight was dope as hell. What happened afterwards is above my pay rate. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, this indeed goes down as one of the great episodes. Mappa did his dang all over this animation. And quite frankly, despite what I said at the beginning of this video, if the delay had to happen to get something like this, by all means. You're watching the video, leave me a comment. Who knows what you think? Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to the Spin Move. Mm -hmm.